This tutorial deals with Chapter 2, Excel. As you can see, what I have open here is the Chapter 2 file that I have in my MTI Excel Chapter 2. Down at the bottom in your tabs, you can see there's four tabs, each with a different worksheet in it. Um, this is for Assessment 1, Assessment 2, Assessment 4, and Assessment 5. Um, assessment 1 just has you dealing with average, total, highest, and lowest. Again, to do all of those, you're just going to go to your Auto Sum button in your editing group, and you've got your Sum, which you'll use for the total, your Average, which you'll use to average numbers, your Max, which you'll use to find the highest value, and your Min, which you'll use to find the lowest value. In Assessment 2, you're dealing with the PMT formula to figure out payments of a loan and interest paid in a loan. In order to do that, you need to go to your FX right here, your insert function, and you're going to find your PMT function, and you're going to go through and fill out the information to get the answers that we're looking for in this assessment. Assessment four is if statements. Once in a while, we have um, students who have a little bit of trouble with if statements. An if statement is considered a conditional function. With the IF function, you can perform conditional tests, meaning if you do this, then you get that. If you look at um, a teacher's grade book, if you get a 92%, then you get an A. If you get an 88%, then you get a B. Those are conditional functions. What we're doing here is we're creating for Deering Industries an IF statement saying these salesmen, um, we want to know what level they're at and if they get a bonus or not. So what I did in column C is I put in the if statement. I said, and I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to do a control tilde. Tilde is the button to the left of the number one, so you can see my formula a little better. What I said here is if B4 is greater than 99,999, comma, then yes, comma, if B4 is less than 99,999, then no. Then after that, we figured out their bonuses. So if column C said yes, they got a 5% bonus. If column C said no, they got zero. And to do that statement, we said equal if C4 equals yes, comma, take B4, which is their sales, and multiply it by 0.05. If it's not yes, then they multiply it by zero, which would mean they're getting zero for a bonus. Um, so I've already put these formulas in, and then remember, I don't have to do it in each cell. I can use my fill handle and drag the formula down. And so I can see who got what for a bonus. Um, Lee got the biggest bonus at $14,038. If you have any trouble with if statements, there's great explanation of if statements on 54 through 56 in the book of chapter 2. The next assessment deals with absolute cell reference. So far, you have dealt with a relative cell reference. A relative cell reference is a cell reference that adjusts. So as I go to my fill handle, like here, and I drug it down, it adjusted. So here it said C5. Here it said C6. Here it said C7. It adjusted. That's what a relative cell reference does. Once in a while, we don't want it to adjust. For instance, I want to take the current quotas and I want to multiply them all by 1.1, okay, to see what the 10% quota is. So I want to take all these numbers and multiply it by B15, meaning it's an absolute cell reference. Absolute meaning it does not adjust. So again, I'm going to do a control tilde so you can see my formulas and what I did. I did equals, because every equation begins with equals, B4, so right here. I'm going to multiply it by B15, which is the 1.1. Now in order to get those dollar signs, you can type them in, or you can select them, and the shortcut is to hit the F4 key of your keyboard. See, now I'm back to a relative cell reference. I hit B4, and it's an absolute. There's a dollar sign before the column and before the row. I hit B4 again and it's mixed. This time the um, the row is um, absolute, not the column. Hit B4 again, now you see the column is absolute. Hit F4 again and it's back to relative and once more it is at 
absolute, which is what I needed. Um, and again, I did the same thing for the 15% quota. I just multiplied it by um, B16. And for the 20%, multiplied it by B17. And once I'm done, I can use my fill handle, just like we talked about earlier, to drag down. Now notice, when I drag down, because it's a relative cell reference, that second part of the equation did not adjust. The first part, which is relative, did. It's B4, B5, B6, B7. But they're all multiplied by B15. I'm going to drag the 20% down. And I'm going to do a control tilde to get us back to our normal view. Those, that's a quick recap of the assessments you have to do for Chapter 2. Um, make sure you know how to do if statements. Make sure you know the difference between a relative, an absolute, and a mixed cell reference. Have a good day. Chapter 2 formulas. There's been a lot of questions on Chapter 2. and It's probably one of the most important chapters in Excel <clears throat> dealing with formulas, if statements, and absolute cell references. Everyone's doing fine with the formulas. I think everyone knows by now to do a basic formula, the easiest way is to go to your auto sum button and you could choose auto sum, which would be to add, um, average, which would average a group of numbers, count, count how many cells have content in it, max, finding the highest level in a range, and min, finding the lowest level in a range. Um, I've had a few questions today already on the if statements for chapter two with assessment four. So I wanted to make sure you understand if statements. Um, an if statement is asking a question more or less. If the salesman earned or made more than 95000 then they get this. If they did not, then they get that. So it's more or less kind of a statement that you're finishing. There's a great example of if statements on page 54 in your book where it deals with grades. If you get a 91% in this class, I'll give you an A. If you get an 89%, you would get a B. So I can set my grade book up to do that, and it would set it or would change, put down your grade depending on what your numeric number was. Now, in the assessment four, what it has is it wants you to write an if statement with the following information saying if the contents in B4 are greater than 150,000, you're going to insert the word platinum. Um, I'm going to quick go ahead and do what's called a control tilde. Uh, tilde is the key to the left of your number one. If I do control tilde, I can see my formulas. I want you to see what my if statement looks like. And you might have to pause the video and kind of write it down to help you. Um, the if statement should look like this. And again, it doesn't matter if you use capitals or not in if statements. Equal if B4 is greater than 150, comma, and then I put platinum in quotes because that's what I wanted to put in the cell, comma, if B4 is greater than 100,000, comma, in quotes, I have gold. If B4 is greater than 75,000, comma, silver is in quotes. If B4 is greater than zero, bronze is in quotes. And at the end, I've got four end parentheses because I've got four different um, items in there. When I pressed um, control tilde then, um, and I pressed enter after typing that formula in, I got silver. If I go to my fill handle, which is the bottom right hand corner, and notice my thick plus sign when I go to the area of the fill handle turns to a thin black plus sign. Now I can drag and it will copy the formula down. If I do a control tilde, you'll see it adjusted. So right here it says if B5, if B6, if B7. So I didn't have to do the formula um, 10 times. I was able to just copy it down. Now after you've done the level, we have to figure out the bonuses. The bonus um, equation was a little bit different. If I do a control tilde, what I'm saying here is equal, hold on, if C4 equals bronze, and notice bronze is in quotes, comma, none, meaning they'll get no bonus. So bronze and none are in quotes there, comma, if, parentheses, C4 equals silver, and that's in quotes, give them $3,000. If C4 is gold, give them 5,000. If C4 is platinum, they get 10,000. Again, I'm going to control tilde to turn that off. I'm going to double click my um, column headers to get the, the column to be the exact size it needs. And I'm going to go to my fill handle and drag it down. 
Now notice I can see there's two people who did not get a bonus and there are two people who got the platinum of $10,000. Now, I know you guys can go in and type silver, gold, bronze. I will look in your formula bar and make sure there's a formula. If there's no formula, you will not get the points for this assessment. Make sure you're doing the formula. Assessment five um, deals with absolute cell reference. I want to talk about absolute cell reference for a second and then I'll kind of show you how assessment five is supposed to be done. Each, each um, reference identifies a cell or a range in a worksheet and each cell reference can be relative, absolute, or mixed. Up until now, you've worked with relative cell references, meaning they adjusted. When I went to the fill handle and I would pull down a formula, it would adjust to C5, C6, C7, so on. An absolute cell reference, meaning you're, it's not going to adjust. So for instance, in this, equation, in this occasion here, I'm going to take, let's start with the equal sign, the current quota, so in B4, 95,500, and I am going to multiply it by the 10% increase, which is in B15. So I click on B15. However, if I were to press enter and fill this down, that's a relative cell reference, meaning now it would say B16, B17, B18, and as you can see, there's nothing in B16, 17, 18, so we'd get errors. I want to make B15 a absolute cell reference. To make it absolute, I select it, and I, what I need to do is put a dollar sign before the letter and a dollar sign before the row. So before the column and before the row. The easiest way to do that is your F4 key. It's a shortcut. F4, look, it took and put a dollar sign before the B and before the 15. If I hit F4 again, just for future references, now there's only one dollar sign. With only one dollar sign, it's a mixed cell reference, meaning the column here would adjust, but the row wouldn't. If I wanted a mixed cell reference the other way, I hit B4 again. Now notice the dollar signs before the column. So here the column would not adjust, but the row would. Press it again, we're back to relative with no dollar signs. One more time, we're where we need to be, absolute. Absolute cell reference has two dollar signs. I press enter, and I see what the price difference would be if I had a 10% increase. I'm gonna go to my fill handle and drag it down. Okay, now, the next step of assessment five says change it to a 20% increase. So I'm gonna look in here and I'm just gonna change it to a 20%, which is a 1.2. I'm just gonna change this from 10 to 20. And notice how it just automatically adjusted. Save it and I will be looking for the 20% increase. I hope this helped with assessment four and assessment five with chapter two. If any other questions occur, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a good day.